For those of you absolute beginners who are trying to figure out chords and keys and notes, this is the ultimate ear training guide. Fasten your seatbelts, that's today's video. Let's go do it right now. Hey, what's up? I'm in a little kitchen and thank you for checking out yet another video. Now, if this is your first time here, don't hesitate to click subscribe and hit that notification bell. Whenever I upload a new video, you'll be kept in the loop and you'll not miss out on anything. Stick around till the end of this video. I will tell you all about Discord and Patreon, about the community, and I will also tell you who the new patrons are for this week. For those of you who are trying to figure out how chords work and you find it hard or cumbersome to figure that out, because I still hear a lot of people saying, I don't know what to look for and how to go about it. Well, this ultimate ear training guide is just made for that exactly, to find out what notes work where and how you should go about it. And if you train yourself to make it even second nature, you'll see that you'll become a star at trying to figure out what chords and what keys are all about. These lessons are for life. It doesn't even matter how old you are, whether you're young or old, it doesn't matter. And even if you already know a lot about music, it will still be beneficial because knowing a lot about music and playing chords and stuff like that, it might be a pitfall because most often I see people that are skilled musicians falling into the same routine of playing all that stuff all over again. So it's cool to have a different insight, a different perspective. And I do believe that this can be it. We are going to create muscle memory by developing our hearing, by trying to figure out what it is that we're listening to and also by detaching ourselves emotionally from the music we really need to figure out what is it that we're hearing instead of how does it make us feel a lot of people say that they can't sing or they can't hold pitch or they can't hold a tone but have you ever been to a sports game or a concert when everybody starts singing for some reason you start singing along and then it's not so hard to find the pitch you really need to be tone deaf to not sing along with whatever is happening so this is something that you can train you can teach yourself how to just keep key how to keep track on what the notes are and it's just like with anything else practice 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 one thing that works is to sing along with a piano for instance so you play a note and you'll sing along with a note you're trying to find the pitch of the note first you do it with one note and then gradually you start to build it up it is very handy to just like not find notes that you can reach so don't play them too low or too high otherwise it won't work but if you find out where you are you'll just play the note you sing the note play the note sing the note and then from then on you start to just expand on your memory so you'll play a different note and then as you get more comfortable you start to jump in the notes so you play a c you play an e you play an f you play a g and then you try to find those notes and you start to become a little bit more handy with where the notes are and this is something that your mind picks up on another strong trick to do is to load up one of your music services itunes deezer spotify it doesn't matter and you'll play one of your favorite tunes the trick is to not look for difficult tunes here so things with a lot of chord changes is probably not going to help you out but if you got a track that is cool and it's got a groove you do the same thing as you were doing before you play your piano and you try to look for notes that will fit into the track so what is this good for why is it useful i don't want to do it i just want to make music i just want to be in the loop is what i keep hearing i understand it but Think of this, it's going to help you to gain control over your music. Not only that, it is going to give you an understanding of why certain bands pick certain chords to make their hits in. It gives you an insight in why emotion is being invoked in certain chords, why certain chord progressions will work. And it's going to give you an extra power over the emotion of your own track. So you won't be just guessing what's happening or just leaving it up to chance or just leaving it up to the sound pack that you downloaded or the MIDI pack that you downloaded. No, you now have full control over where you think you're, or where you want your track to go. And is that not really what you would want if you're making music? And I know people think it's hard, but it's not going to be harder than learning how a synth works, really, you know? All right, party people, before we get started, let me tell you what I've got uh, on the uh, play tonight uh, today or whenever you are watching this I've got the brain this is the RK8 by retro kids this is where I record my MIDI information the 909 is linked to this 
everything pretty much is linked to this. Uh, certain things have their own clock. For instance, the DFAM here gets triggered by a uh, rim shot level here that I can also then uh, play via MIDI. You'll see two different keyboards today. I've got the subsequent also uh, embedded as a master keyboard, but usually um, if I'm not bringing the subsequent, I'm bringing the uh, Mini Lab 3. Uh, and the Mini Lab 3 has got a few things connected to the um, RK8008 uh, because if I play my kick drum, I can now mute it here as you can see. Uh, that means that the eight tracks have been set to be uh, engaged or muted from the Mini Lab 3 and this last slider here is connected to act as a recorder uh, or record off. So if I was to go to my second track and think like I want to record a clap then I can say like yeah that's cool my clap is here just gonna record it place it in record and I'll go in boom And my clap is recorded. I can tell the RK8 to quantize it or don't quantize it. I've put everything on quantize already, which means with Alt, it works as a shift button, if, if you don't know. So you say like shift quantize, which is six, shift transpose, which is five, shift filter, which is four, and then shift output, which is the MIDI channel. So I've already set ahead of time one through five. Uh, those are the channels that I'm going to record the drums on. So on track three, I'm going to now um, look at my closed hi-hat. So again, I'm going to go in, which was not what I wanted. Um, so I'm going to go in and say this um, uh, and say yes. So I've now deleted that note, go to the right. I was lucky to not have recorded this on the clap channel, otherwise I had to delete the whole clap channel and redo it again. But since I've recorded um, on chip track three, it's easy for me to just like take the clap out and do the hat in. I'm gonna just leave it at this, right? So this is just drums. I'm going to um, cancel the drums for, for a minute. Let's go to uh, track seven, because I know that track seven is, um, get out of there, track seven is output track seven, is MIDI channel 13. This is how I've got it engaged. This is MIDI channel nine, subsequent. The Minotaur is MIDI channel 10, and then this is MIDI channel 13, the JP, JP08. I am not superstitious, so I'm using MIDI channel 13. So going there means that I can now play stuff and I've not engaged this local uh, off so it's also playing the subsequent but okay now the thing is to note if you're playing a major key it means it feels a little bit more happy let's turn that off and let's just go for Shorter note. So, so major chord, all white notes. So yeah, I don't have to, to to look at like what is a diminished chord, what is a seventh or a sixth chord. You know, this is just all white notes. And when I start on the C, this is a major chord. If I was to just go two notes down and start on the A, now it's a minor chord. This is minor. And to give you an idea on how we perceive major and minor chords, major chords are perceived to be a little bit more happy. A major scale is a happier scale, is what we say. And a minor scale is a little bit more sad. Now, can you give an example? Yes, great question. Glad you asked. Think of the A team. Yeah, 
Very major. Also, Cotton Eye Joe. Very happy, very let's go line dancing, you know, and major chords. They're a little bit more, you know. And to think of a, a, minor, a minor chord, I should say, minor chords like, for instance, um, Deepash Mode. Yeah, they're very minor chordish, you know. Um, enjoy the silence, it's a very minor driven chord. Uh, another minor uh, uh, scale track is um, Harry Potter's theme. Very minor. So, the thing to do if you're working on a DAW is to keep this in mind and that in mind also. Because, moving on, if you're going to think on what am I going to play and how I'm going to um, yeah, figure out what notes are. For instance, on my black box, I have lined it up that this is where I play my samples. This is all com drum computer stuff. It's all old school kind of vibe, and it works. You know, you got the drum 99 drum computer, the mini tar, you got a DFAM, and you can debate those on modern machines. They still do that old school kind of stuff, you know, the old school vibe. Um, but if you want to be a little bit more modern sometimes, or flirting with uh, maybe the outside world is how I, I, I call it, um, to embed some loops or something to get that 909 classic sound that we all know and love, but to just like derail it a little bit, I'm using the black box. Now on the black box I've done it in a way that the bottom row, no, the, there's a column. The column top to bottom, the four um, different uh, cells that I'm using is one track. So I'm looking at this thing horizontally, right? No, vertically, I should say. Horizontally, it's the, the, the bottom row is all, yeah, I'm, I'm pointing to the MIDI fighter here because it's, that's is what I've got connected to the black box. Um, the bottom row is all top loops. So if I was to play my drums again, I can play a loop in the bottom, that plays. As you can hear, make sure that loop is on, otherwise this will stop. So now you can hear how the loop is playing around with the um, drum computer. And as you can hear, there was also some sort of a melodic content snippet in there, which starts again like one, two, three, and. Now, since I have programmed everything myself, I know where those keys and notes are. But if I was to play with somebody else and they start to introduce samples or some music of some kind, I need to figure out where I am. So this is what I say, like if you are trying to find out what your own music is, say for instance, you play along with a track that you heard on Spotify or iTunes or whatever, you'll just have to figure out where the note is, right? So that's what I'm going to do right now. If the second column on my um, black box has got lead sounds. Oh, there you go. So now I have to find out. I will go to the bass line, which is on track 10, channel 6 here, MIDI channel 10. Okay. So that's C, D, E, F, G, G sharp. And it's a minor chord. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Which means that my A note, this note that I've got right here, that we've determined where all the minor notes needs to go to this G sharp chord. And I know that it's one down, so what I'm going to do is transpose one note down. So 
So now I've transposed this A minor uh, scheme to fit what is playing here. I found out that it was this note. This was my A note. So turning this off means But I know that the sample is not playing this. It's playing. So this needs to go here. And I've done it on this keyboard. So here you see it's still the original one, but here, that same A has now been transposed a bit. So now I can play all these notes and I will never hit any wrong notes and that's a trick to do so you have to figure out what the root note is the root note it, it being this and that's the one that you would like to go for right so now i know that i can play a bass line there so i'm thinking okay how am i going to do that i'm going to probably look at um, how that's going to work out and i'm going to stick a note there that's going to just like basically stay on the same thing. I'm not going to follow what is being played here because you can hear that it's playing a certain thing like that's what it's playing but I would like to just go and think like okay if I'm not very um, handy with trying to figure out the the notes too much sometimes it's a chord that's just you know headache then I'm going to think like okay what is the best way to go about it what I'm going to do is I am going to just like play percussive notes with the sounds that I have already so this sound let's say can I stick something underneath that makes it groovy but at the same time going Yeah, filter it down a bit and record it in. Ooh. Okay, I'm liking that. Now I'm going to add some stuff to it because in the end of the day I know that that's always going to work. And the trick also is with the music I'm playing I need to add stuff to this loop so that this loop is going to fall to the background. So I'm going to take it out of record. My RK8. I'm going to go to track 8, which is the subsequent. And open it up. Woo! I'm liking that sound. I'm liking it very much. Let's see where I am in the measure. Bam, that's one, four, five, nine, and now we're going to go. Okay, get out of there, erase this low note. Ooh, space. Let's listen to it. Here we go. I'm liking this. And if I'm turning the music off, I'm getting inspired by this chord. Nice. Now, for some reason, I tend to really um, play a lot of minor chords. It's, it's seldom that I play major chords. Dance music, it's in, in a way, it's melodic techno, whether it be techno, whenever somebody plays something, it is always a minor chord for some reason. Now, I'm liking this, but it's a bit on the loud side, so I'm going to turn down my subsequent a little bit. I'm going to go in track 7. Now, you might wonder, the Acid Box 3, what is it doing here? The JP08 is a cool synth. Uh, and I like it, but uh, I've got big fingers and it's very small, the knobs here. So what I'm doing is I'm sticking the output coming out of here in the asset box and then I'm going to go to my little desk over there. So 
now I've got like Okay, that works because I know that I can play whatever note. I'm never going to play something wrong because I have to transpose this little machine so everything that I'm going to play is going to fit with the sample that plays from the black box. Starting on the A again, I'm going to go ah, Let's record it in. Of course I have to play a wrong note. You know what, I'm just going to do that again. And then, if it's recording and it's blinking, press stop. And then you can record it again. So, so now it's overdub, out, in, here we go. There you go, come on. And to um, prove a point, listen to the filter here. Listen to the filter here. liking it, but I think I'm going to overdub it a little bit. Yep, let's overdub it straight in. Shorter notes, obviously. Filter it down. So now I know that this is just going to work, really. It's really going to work. I still got a top loop, and I still got an arpeggio. Let's play the arpeggio first. Kick out, loop in. Very powerful stuff, right? Now, I've also made sure that my music is always going to be on the last three um, uh, tracks here to mute, right? So if I'm going to move over to a different track, I will already engage the top loop, because then there's no music there. And now I'm going to switch over to a different sound. Let's do it here and mute this. So now I'm thinking, okay, woo. Okay. It's gonna be an F. That track is an F. You can clearly hear that. I'm liking that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the music out. I can go to a different pattern, obviously, and think like, you know, that's not bother, but for sake of playing live, I love to play live. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off, take out the music. So track, channel, track eight. Erase that. Yes, seven. Erase it. Yes, six. Erase it. Uh, yes. So now I've got blank patterns again. Now this needs to be transposed again. So 
So now I've transposed that chord back to that root note. So the F here, here, is now with my A here on this little machine. As you can hear, octave up. So again, I can, I'm cool. And this is subsequent, so if I'm gonna make a bass line with a subsequent, that's something different. Nice, okay. Completely different vibe, but still, I'm in the key again, so this is important, you know? So you train yourself to really think like, how does this work? I know where I am, and I'll um, kill the music in a second and, and, and explain how I managed to get myself to get into this kind of vibe, right? Okay, um, this is still recording, yes it is. Take it out of record, that's what I've done, I can do it here. I can hit it here, because this is also map. I'm gonna go to, yeah, go to here. Do we like it? Yes, we do. Here we go. <laughs> it's always the same thing. Oh, is it? Oh, well, that's not even so that bad. I'm going to record it in. And then there's no. Happy little accident. Cool. So this is always going to be that kind of vibe, right? I've always played that kind of, you know? different things. Let's go to the mini tower and this is now something that's a bass synth. How are we going to use this? Oh nice. Let it in. Again, percussive stuff, I love playing percussive stuff with this thing. Let's do a little bit of sound design here, this goes off. So now I'm going to take this arp out because I want to really focus on what this minitar is playing. You see, I get inspired by just this sample now.
kick out a little bit of release here. Okay, now play that arp again, and there's a lead also, kick out and Okay, enough music. I'll tell you something. How come that this works? If um, I did a trick where I was really listening to um, tracks on Spotify or whatever, and I was just like making sure that I could, could find the, um, the root note of what was being played. So pretty much is what I'm doing right here. If for instance I'm playing using the music here, and if I was to play a different pad, for instance, like track three, or this here. It would be a game for me to find out um, where is the root note coming from. Different uh, chords here. Okay. So this is D minor then, D minor, this is also, you know, I have to transpose it back to where it is, to center, see, and this is the note, and this is where you need to go, so we're going to transpose it. So now we're going to... Again, my A minor chord will now align with... And this is what I did. I tried to figure out what is the root note. This is the root note. So now once you know that, now the whole world opens. And from that moment on, you know, like, okay, I can play. cool and you know that, that you can also go here boom up boom back boom here boom here here boom this is all stuff that's been done before right for instance Mark Schapink is my new patron for this week, following everything on patreon.com slash analog kitchen. Thanks for joining up and I think that I saw you pop into the Discord chat as well as Patreon is bridged over to Discord. That's a nice uh, um, implementation that they have worked out. So that's absolutely amazing. And then we talk shop, there's a community there, like-minded folks, we talk about synths and stuff. It's very, very, very interesting. Now. Another thing that I would like to say is that um, I've got a presentation that I have prepared for uh, if you join up at Patreon, you can get it uh, there. It's really cool. And of course, it's called the Ultimate Ear Training Guide. And it will guide you through all the steps that I've talked about today. And you know, you can just like uh, check out how that works. I think it is a very valuable thing to learn uh, and to develop in, in your quest to enhance your music. Now, thanks for watching. If you made it this far into the video, you, sir or ma'am, are an absolute superstar. Um, I'd like to direct you also to uh, my Bandcamp page where I've got this cool track 
YouTube upload it called Defam Jam number one. That's going to be Defam Jam number two pretty soon. Uh, but we're working that, so uh, don't worry about it. If there's anything, leave a comment in the section down below. Thank you for watching. I promise you, I'll give you another video next week on a location. Keep watching this space. Thank you for watching, and I'm out. Peace.